Welcome back to the OK Kite Border. For those of you who have been alongside me in my kite hydrofoil journey, you may remember that I made the transition about two years ago to foil kites. And that discovery led to me mainly using the Fly Surfer Sole and the Fly Surfer Peak 4 for my kite hydrofoil sessions. There were a number of reasons that I made this switch, but the largest initial reason was probably the light wind performance of a Ram Air kite. That then progressed to personal preferences such as self-launch and landing ability, drift performance, compactness, and a few other traits which differed between the sole and the Peak 4. I had been intrigued with single strut or strutless inflatable kites, but honestly, I just didn't have the confidence in their potential upside for the unstable and gusty conditions of Oklahoma. Not to mention their water relaunch ability which probably fell somewhere between the sole and the peak four in performance. But with the release of Ocean Rodeo's Alula and Duotone's Pentatex, I was excited to give them a chance and see if the Ocean Rodeo Alula Rome and the Duotone SLS Neo could bring me back to the tube kite. So this video will be a comparison of these two kites in the 10 meter size in ultralight, mid, and upper wind ranges. And I will also compare and contrast them against my current foil kite lineup that I use for hydrofoil free ride. Just to give you some other data, I weigh 160 pounds, and the hydrofoil wings that I will be using during this comparison are the Delta Cozumel wing, which is around 900 square centimeters, and the Delta Monofoil wing at around 1500 square centimeters. Okay, spoiler alert. Even though this episode is a showdown between the Alula Rome and the Neo SLS, there isn't going to be a winner. And here's why. These two kites, even though both being classified as three strut wave kites with lighter and more durable materials in their construction, are very, very different. So this journey is more about trying to identify what your preferences are in kite hydrofoiling and match those up the best way possible between the strengths of these two kites. Leaving you with the decision of, is one of these tube kites worth the purchase? So let's get started. Let's not spend too much time on construction differences, but it does need to be mentioned that the Alula and the Penta TX replace traditional areas of Dacron on the leading edge and struts of the kite. The Alula is a very crisp feel to the touch and it's very rigid. It allows for a fairly high PSI and a decreased size in leading edge and struts in the design. The 10 meter Alula Rome is the lighter of the two kites in overall weight and both kites do pack fairly small. Obviously not as small as the sole in the Peak 4 and I would also argue that the manufacturer was a little bit aggressive in bag sizing leaving you after that first use with a bit of a fat guy and a little coat presentation without a lot of squeezing. The Pentatex of the Neo SLS feels closer to a clothing fabric to the touch and it's very different from the Alula. Only time will tell on the claims of increased durability with these two fabrics, but it is true that they are lighter and theoretically they should perform better in lighter winds. Questions that you must answer for yourself are, what does access for repair look like to these specialized fabrics? The Rome is also lacking a zipper on the front leading edge for repair of a busted out bladder. So how complex is this on the kite? Also, of course, the elephant in the room is pricing. With these price points, getting into the range of performance level Ram Airs, as the 10 meter Alula Rome retails for $21.89, and the 10 meter Neo SLS for $17.80. The 10 meter Rome will comfortably launch in six to eight mile per hour winds and it will stay in the air in these lower limits. So I would say the light wind claims are completely true, but I would also argue that that's only a piece of the story and here's why. The Rome sits very deep in the wind window and it has very little grunt. Very comparable in my opinion to the Peak 4 and many times you can overcome this in a water start with a five meter peak by how fast that you can move the kite. But with the Rome, you have to be extra efficient. 
as a 10 meter kite's just not going to move like a five meter. So once up on foil on the roam, you have to let the kite fly. This means following it at times to let it breathe and you can't muscle it upwind in the lightest of conditions or it will just choke out and you will bog down to a sunken position. It was weird how much it actually felt like the peak in light conditions, except of course, there really is no concern with the roam hitting the water as it's a pretty good water relauncher in the lightest of conditions. The 10 meter Neo may not fly in as light a winds as the Rome, but subjectively we are only talking one to two mile per hour differences in the wind speed requirements. However, I would argue that as long as you have the baseline wind speeds to fly the Neo, it is much more efficient for foiling in the lightest of conditions. The Neo sits further forward than the Rome in the window and it has substantially more grunt in underpowered conditions. And it's able to generate more speed. So when you come out of a jibe, even if you have to pump around the corner, once the Neo kicks in out of that down loop, you can lean against it and use the grunt of the kite to reach better upwind angles and increase speeds. Even in eight to 10 mile per hour winds, the Neo has plenty of power for upwind tacks without stalling. This is definitely an advantage that I was not expecting with this kite. If you drop it in the water in underpowered conditions, it can be a little more difficult to relaunch due to its high V position with the center lines, but it's really not a huge difference from the Rome. Even though the Rome will launch and fly in the lightest of winds, it's not a true indicator of hydrofoil fun on the water. Whereas with the Neo, if it has enough to fly, you are going to have a great foiling session. So surprisingly, in the lightest of conditions, I would choose the 10 meter Neo SLS over the Alula Rome. When reaching winds in the mid-teens, the Rome becomes a lot of fun. You don't need the grunt of the kite for performance. It has extremely light bar pressure, which I really prefer, and so does my kiter's elbow, and it's an effortless down looper at all times. It's just not going to pull you off foil no matter how bad your transition technique is with looping the kite. It's the least intimidating kite that I've ever used on the water. Even transitioning and looping over shallow sandbars was of no concern due to its friendly nature with down loops and back loops. And even though it's not great for upwind angles, it is more than sufficient when you're properly powered. And really the fun part about the Roam, not surprisingly, is in the downwind performance of the kite. It's a phenomenal drifter, basically impossible to outrun and it doesn't require much bar input to accomplish that trait. The Rome is not a booster, so don't even expect that out of this kite, but in its sweet spot, it's a phenomenal drifter and looper. It's a very quick moving kite, I would say maybe even quicker than the Neo, even with the promotion of the Neo's new flex strut system. The Rome will be some of the most minimalistic feel you're going to feel on a hydrofoil underneath a tube kite especially in the three strut class. With winds in the mid-teens, the SLS Neo shines as well, but in different ways. It has a heavier bar pressure than the Rome, but nothing to the level of moderate. It has good upwind angles, its grunt is always present, and it will create lift, even in winds below 10 miles per hour. So if you were a booster on foil, you most definitely would lean more towards the Neo. Down looping of the kite is not as friendly as a Rome, but that would be consistent with following the attributes of the two kites. And it's really no issue to be concerned with in its sweet spot. When it comes to drift, the Neo is more than adequate, but it's not as efficient as the Rome, and it requires more steering to successfully maintain some of those downwind angles. At this level assessment, when foiling in wind speeds in the teens and under, for me, it's an easy decision. I would choose the SLS Neo, but being from the gusty conditions of Oklahoma, I know that if it's blowing 15 miles per hour, there's a 25 mile per hour bullet just waiting around the corner. The Roam performs remarkably well in this range. It seems that its top end just keeps going. I have ridden the Roam in 20 miles per hour of winds on a hydrofoil with no sense of panic, and I am a chicken rider. I really don't enjoy being fully juiced on a hydrofoil, 
which should fall in line with why that I do enjoy wing foiling and using the Peak 4 so often in my foil sessions. So when I say that this kite is gust friendly, I promise this is a significant upside to the Roam. We are talking about a comfortable foiling range of 10 to 20 plus mile per hour winds for a 160 pound rider on a moderate size hydrofoil with one kite. An expensive kite, yes, but a single kite nonetheless. This is the point where my proverbial quick release I throw on the Neo. It tops out quickly in the upper ranges of wind and it just doesn't absorb the gusts as effectively as the Rome. It becomes very difficult to dump the power out of the kite. Now again, if you're a booster, you can probably hit some 40 footers if you can hold it down in these conditions, but that's not me. Just expect this limitation in heavy or gusty conditions or Pull out the surfboard or the twin tip when this happens. This is a twin tip right here if any of you forgot what one looked like. So let's take a look at a breakdown for free ride hydrofoiling performance between these two 10 meter kites. For the lightest conditions of hydrofoil riding, I would surprisingly choose the Neo SLS in winds of eight to 12 miles per hour. Drift goes to the Alula Rome as you're just not going to outrun it. Upwind performance, the Neo, which has more than adequate angles of upwind riding. Water relaunch is a slight edge to the roam. Ease of transition looping also goes to the roam as you just can't get in trouble with front and back looping the kite. Boosting is a no-brainer. The Neo easily wins in this category. Wind range goes to the roam, especially in those upper limits. And of course, price, the SLS Neo. So the question that I have to answer for myself and you may as well is, am I ready to transition back to the tube kite? And honestly, I'm just not sure yet. I see the benefits of these new inflatables on the market and they are definitely bridging the gap between the tube and the benefits of foil kites. If I did have to choose, and again, there is no winner in this comparison due to their overall contrasting qualities, but I would probably choose the 10 meter SLS Neo and then continue riding under a peak four or a wing in higher winds. And who knows, maybe someday I will be able to do this. Nope. If you would like to look at ordering one of these kites or any other gear, please support me by reaching out to Green Hat Kiteboarding for your wind and board sports needs. There's a link below in the description and as for me, it's now time to head back to winter in Oklahoma, and we'll see you next time on the OK Kite Border.